Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to Advanced C++ Tutorial 4, Part 3. In the last video, we finally derived one of the holy grails of game programming and graphics programming. That's the rotation formula. And now we want to use that. We want to code some stuff up. Uh, so what first what we're going to do is we're going to just code up a single star that's rotating in the center of the screen. First thing we want to do is we want to add a little rotation operation to our list of vector operations. So let's find a place for it. I don't know. Let's put it right around here. So let's add a function rotate. It takes template type as a parameter. That's the angle. And it will return a reference to the current vector. So what are we going to do here? Well, we want to calculate our new x and our new y based on the current x and y and the rotation angle. So first off, we notice here we're going to have to calculate uh, you know, cos phi and sin phi, but you're calculating them both twice, so it's better to calculate them once and then use that result in both places. So we're going to go const t, and let's call the uh, the calculated value, I don't know, cos theta, and that's going to be equal to the cos of the angle. Pretty simple. Cos is a templated uh, function, so it will adapt to the type that we pass it. And we do the same for sine theta. And now we've got to calculate our new x dependent on these guys. So x is, what is it going to be? It's going to be x cos theta minus y sine theta. So x is equal to x times cos theta minus y times sine theta. Now there's a problem here in that we still need the old x to calculate y because that appears in the uh, expression for y. So we can't just write over x right now. So let's go const t new x is equal to this and then we're gonna put in the expression for y and that's x times sine theta plus y times cos theta we can just put that in there directly and then finally we update x with new x and there you go you have got your rotation and let's also make a non-mutating version that just returns a new vec2 like this and we have our rotation operations all defined up a little, got a little carried away on the indentation there there we go all right, so we go into game.cpp, and uh, what we want to do is we want to rotate just a single star in the center of the screen, just to test out our rotation code. Uh, we don't need all this bullshit here, so we can just select it, control K, control C, uh, comment that stuff out. We'll leave in here the DT because it's going to be necessary. Now let's toggle. We'll leave these guys here, it doesn't really matter. We need a std vector of vec2 for our model, we'll just call it star. And we need something to build up time in. Uh, so let's go float t is equal to 0, 0.0f. There we go. Okay, so now every frame we're just going to generate a fresh star because we don't care. So star is equal to star make. And let's make the outer 150 and the inner let's make it 60. It doesn't really matter that much. Now we need to calculate our angle of rotation, what we're going to rotate our base star by, and that depends on time. So we're going to build up, let's go up to here, so t plus and equals dt, first of all. Now constant float theta, which is our angle of rotation, is going to be equal to, and we're going to do t times pi. So t times 2 pi would be one rotation every second t times pi is one rotation every two seconds. Now we don't have pi defined. I don't like to type in 3.14 in every single place. What I like to do is go into, not chili win, into chili math and just define some constants up in here, up in here. So we do that like this, we, uh, we make a double pi that has a lot of digits and then we define the float pi based on the double. And uh, I use this in all the places so it's nice to put it here in uh, chili math. And now this works, so now we have our angle of rotation. Let us rotate our model. We do a range-based for loop. Uh, I don't know, just auto point in star. For each point in the star, we want to do point dot rotate by some angle theta. Now, one thing that I fixed, I didn't show. I forgot to put in the return this. You gotta, you gotta put the, you gotta return the this. And I always forget to, but I fixed it. So now we got our star. It is being rotated based on time. We just got to draw that guy. So we'll go cam dot draw. Ah, shit. This guy needs a drawable, but we don't have the whole drawable system. 
can we can we fake it? We don't want to create a whole new entity class for this. Yeah. Okay, so drawable, it just has a constructor. We can just pass it a reference to model and it'll work fine. So this should be simple and clean. Is the way that you're making me feel tonight. Uh star. Colors will make a yellow star. Cause it was all yellow. There you go. Save it. Run it. And there you go. You've got your star. It is that motherfucker is rotating like a mother trucker. And uh, I believe that this is mission accomplished. Not shit. I commented out the uh, the camera code so you can't actually scale and rotate. But if I if I uncomment this here, save it, run it, update the camera controls. Now you can see we can you know scroll around, we can zoom out, we can zoom in. So this guy works perfectly in our existing uh, system, our pipeline of transformations, no problem. So now what we're actually going to do is we are going to create a new branch off of this code here. This was the end of the star field before we erased it from existence. So we're going to create a new branch, we'll call it star field. Uh, and yeah, we'll check it out. Now we lost the commit where we put in the rotation stuff and we want that so let's view history of dev and let's cherry pick in this commit into starfield now when we do that we get some conflicts because chili math was deleted which is a problem deleted from target edited on source keep file so we'll keep that file and edit it on source edit it on target and let's compare the files so yeah source we want to take source because that's the one that has the stuff that we need. So now we've resolved the conflicts. We just got to commit the stage. So we'll do rotation stuffs. Now we can continue. All right, and we got the vec two in here. Uh, we got the rotation, but we don't have chili math. And the reason why is because we took the um, we cherry picked out the file chili math, but the change to the solution was not in that commit. So it, the solution, as far as the solution is concerned of the project, that file is not part of the project. So all we got to do is open and explore. We can go to Chili Math and we'll just add that back in there. And then in our commits, we will amend the previous commit. And if we look at our history, now we've got the vec2 rotation ops and PyConst in our star field. All right, now that we've got our timeline all fixed up here, uh, let's make sure that it still runs. Yeah, the star field is still running. Though I appear not to have the homework in here. That's distressing. Why are my stars not animating? Well, stepping into this stuff here, it looks like time is not being initialized for some reason. Might be have something to do... I don't know why that is the case. It's a little weird, but... Let's do time is equal to 0.0f. We'll initialize that guy. And let's see if that fixes. Yeah, now it's working good. Okay, so we're back in business. We'll make a very clear commit message here, and then uh, we are going to... What do we want to do? We want to add rotation to the list of transformations that can be built up in our drawable. So right now in drawable.h, we are building up the scale x, the scale y, and the translation, and we want to build up the rotation. So we can add rotations to each other, and that just adds the angles. If I rotate something by 10 degrees, and then I do another rotation by, I don't know, 45 degrees, and then I do another rotation by negative 30 degrees, the end result is going to be just add those angles together, and you do a rotation by the sum of those. Now, we know that scaling, if we do a translation, then we do a scaling, the scale affects the translation. So how does rotation affect the other things? Well, you've seen in the previous uh, derivations, that rotation does not affect scaling. So if I scale something, and then I rotate, that's the same as if I rotated and then scaled. They don't affect each other. But let's take a point here, and we are going to translate it up by, I don't know, by, by however much this is. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, so it'll end up here. But what if we rotate first 90 degrees and then translate up? Well, rotate this point 90 degrees goes here, translate up goes here. So you can see the order is very important for translation and rotation. Rotation affects 
translation, just like scaling effects translation. Remember I told you that translation is a fussy little bitch? Well, I wasn't lying. You have to do some special treatment for translations. So let's go in here, let's put float angle is equal to 0.0f. Now let's add another transformation in here, rotate. And it's just a float angle. We'll do angle in because we already have an angle and we want to do that angle plus and equals angle in. There's your angle set. Now you have to do your translation stuff. And now that's very simple. Translation dot rotate by angle in. And there you go. You've just built up a rotation into your existing transformations. Now, the last thing we need to be able to do is we have to actually take this angle of rotation into account when we render our polyline. So we need to change this function here. So first we want to change the signature. So we toggle header code file and we go into here and let's go float angle. And then in here we got to make that match. So that's float angle in the CPP file. And the simplest way to do this is just to add your rotation into your list of transforms. We want to put the rotation before the translation because if not, we're going to get an extra rotation of the translation like beyond the one that we had that we built up in the drawable. We don't want that. So we go V dot rotate by the angle. And there you go. There you, you have it built into your system. If we build it, it should build fine. No, it doesn't because I messed something up. All right. When we call it, we've actually got to pass in the mother trucking angle. Build that. It runs. There shouldn't be any difference because we're not actually applying any rotations to these uh, drawables. But let's fix that. In the entity, let's go float angle is equal to zero. And let's do a set angle and get angle. So that looks like this. Set angle, get angle. And now in our, where is it? Star bro? It's at a rotation speed. We'll call it float, rot speed. Uh, and now we need to float, rot speed into here. And we'll initialize the rot speed in here. All right. Now we need to actually generate some random rotation speeds. So in game.cpp, we got more freaking parameters to put in here. Const expr float. Let's just do a um, uniform distribution because I'm feeling lazy. So min rot speed is going to be equal to negative 2.0 times pi. Now I don't believe we have chili math. So let's include chili willy. And I guess the maximum rotation speed is going to be just two pi. So we'll have them rotation in both directions. Uh, toggle. Then in here, we're gonna have to create a uniform. No, we'll create a uniform distribution. We'll do rot speed dist min rot speed max rot speed. I don't have a max. Why do I not have a max road speed? Fuck. Copy pasta. Gets you every time. All right. And then in here, we got to create the star. So we'll generate our road speed and we will pass it in to the C tour. We see that none of our stars are rotating. Obviously not because in star bro, we've got to, in an update, we've got to do some rotation. So. Uh, update color, update scale, update rotation. So here we do set set angle, uh, which is going to be get angle plus rot speed times time. And then we call update rotation in our update function. And if we run that, we still get absolutely nothing. So now I'm, now I'm getting a little pissed. Ah, so in entity, we, we, we keep track of our angle, but we don't actually use it to do some good shit. So we want to do drawable dot rotate and you want to rotate about the center of your model before you translate it. So rotate should be before translate and we want to rotate by the angle. 
So we apply these transformations to the drawable, we build them up before we return it. Now let's see if it works. Now it works. Holy shit. Okay. Well, I mean... These guys are completely spazzing out. Alright. So we're adding road speed plus time, which gets bigger and bigger over time, to the current angle. We don't want to do that. We just want to set the angle to road speed times time. We don't want to get the current angle. It's a dead reckoning here. Alright, that's a little more... That ah, looks a little more presentable. Beautiful. So, rotation. It's all good. We love it. It looks pretty. Look at this. Isn't it pretty? Pretty pretty. Alright, now there's one last thing that we can kind of uh, improve. We can make a pretty big improvement to our system here. So when we apply our transform to all the vertices in the closed polyline, this is in graphics.cpp, um, we're calling rotate for every vertex. What does rotate do? Well, one of the things it does is it, it calculates sine and cos of the angle, right? So if we've got 100 vertices, we're calling sine and cos 100 times. Sine and cos of the exact same angle. We're repeating the exact same work 100 times. And sine and cos are very slow operations. So it's not a premature optimization to think about how you can reduce your sines and coses. So instead of using our stock rotation function, which has, to, which has the sine and cos built into it, let's do a little optimization here. We'll calculate sine theta and cos theta uh, at the beginning of the function here. And in X form, Let's take the body of our uh, rotation function, we'll copy that, we'll paste it into here, and we're going to massage it a little bit. So, it's not going to be T, it's going to be a float, because we're, we're keyed into Vec2 of floats. So we're going to go new x is equal to v dot x minus v dot y. v dot y is equal to v dot x, v dot y, and then v dot x is equal to new x. And there you go. Let's put some comments in here. And now you've got some optimized stuff and you're calling sine and cos many, many, many times fewer. And that is going to give you a pretty huge um, speed up if you're drawing a lot of vertices. The results should be exactly the same. There's no difference there. You're just using a lot fewer clock cycles to do the same thing. And it doesn't hurt the readability a little bit. I mean, obviously it's a little sexier to just call a single function and get it done. But I think it's worth it in this case to do a little bit of optimization. And there you go, there's our beautiful star field of rotating stars. Uh, now, for the homework, what I'm gonna get you guys to do is we've got this camera here, we can, uh, we can obviously translate, we can zoom in, we can zoom out, but we can't rotate the camera, can we? So that is gonna be my task for you, implement a rotating camera functionality into the pipeline. Should be a fun little task, but that's going to about do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button. It helps all out. It uh, helps. Uh, it helps all out. And uh, I will see you soon with some more advanced C++, aka math time.